Hi there, welcome to the Fierce Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm. And I think it's time for us women to shift the conversation in business and step into our feminine leadership to do the most iconic work the aesthetic industry has ever seen. Each week, I'll be bringing a powerful dose of strategy, sarcasm, solutions, and sass that will rev up your creativity and ignite your brilliance as you link arms with me along our shared path of personal and professional growth in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Hello, leader. Thank you for tuning in to the Fierce Factor podcast. It's your host, Kaylee here. And listen, before I jump into this incredible episode number 137, I want to share a couple quick reminders with you. Number one, spots are filling quickly for our final live virtual event this year. I'm hosting my PAM retreat next week on December 5th through 7th. It's a three-day masterclass where I will be walking you through our celebrated proprietary aesthetic method tool while helping you identify the gap in your market and devise a plan for marketing your unique approach, technique, or perspective. And the idea here is to create a brand identity that really gives your business its own soul. If you're like many of our clients, you have found that patients love coming to you for your personal magic, which feels good, but it truly then can create some complexities when it comes to scaling your business, delegating to other providers, and opening multiple locations because there's only one of you. So the key to scaling leader is to develop an ecosystem that doesn't revolve around you and your hours of treating patients but instead is led by your vision. And so you can learn more about this, this proprietary aesthetic method tool and what I'll be covering in this training. You can also register at klcconsultants.com forward slash proprietary method. Like I said, this is gonna be the last live training of the year. So be sure if you've been waiting to jump into one of my programs, this is the one for you. And number two, If you're on my email list, you saw a very exciting announcement last week about our brand new Practice Manager Fast Track course we have launched exclusively to our subscriber list. If you're not on my list, be sure to head to klcconsultants.com forward slash join and subscribe for updates. Uh, Basically, what I offered there was an opportunity to be part of our beta launch of this new program. If you are looking to fast track your practice, manager in 2023, you need to check out this industry breakthrough. It is a 15-hour course plus private coaching accelerator program for practice managers in aesthetics. Listen, when I transitioned from corporate management into a managing partner of a plastic surgery and wellness institute, I very quickly realized that there were gaps in education, you know, practical, understandable, useful education for practice managers and leaders in our space of aesthetics. And when I was running my practice, I was wearing a million hats. I was responsible for the operations of a multi-million dollar business and team, yet I found myself creating tools from scratch as it related to small business organization, performance management, marketing, and really like relevant financial literacy. I mean, no one taught me in business school how to determine my full cost of goods sold on a non-surgical aesthetic procedure. And so don't worry, I have built this tool and training inside of this program along with so many more templates, tools, resources, podcasts, video trainings. I mean, this is the curriculum that has been curated inside of our Pop Leadership Academy Incubator. Lock in step with our clients and partners who are slaying the same dragons as you, leader, and aspiring and rising practice managers in our space. So if this is something that might fit the bill, if you are a practice manager or looking to help develop your practice manager, their skills, their confidence, and their competency in running your business, you need to get on the list for this. Again, the beta is only available to those on my subscriber list, but you can go and learn more about this program at klcconsultants.com forward slash practice manager. I cannot even begin to describe my level of enthusiasm around this program. It's something that has been so needed 
So I'm super, super pumped to be pre-releasing this to my list and, you know, to go literally change the name of the game for practice managers in our space. Okay, so done with the announcements. Let's dive into today's episode. Today, I want to chat with you about the detrimental effects of the way you emotionally show up in your business. I just want to share a quick story about an Academy client who recently shared her story of a life-changing transformation in her business when she refocused her priorities from serving clients at any cost to investing first into serving herself. About six months ago, this client came to us, let's say with her hair on fire, (laughs) kind of like that. She had a fully booked schedule. She was seeing her patients some nights till 9 p.m. at night. She would wake up in the morning, slam down coffee and repeat. And honestly, when she started working with us, she didn't even know where she was going to find the time for coaching. (laughs) She just knew she needed it. And I get it. She felt like she was being pulled in a million different directions. She had a husband and three girls at home, a small team at the business, and an exhaustive daily schedule of patients, vendors, marketing, team building. You get it, right? And so last week in our academy, we were talking about top lessons that each of us had learned through the process of putting the work in daily to become a stronger entrepreneur. And this particular client, she gave an answer about her lesson learned that it just stuck with me. In fact, it was so inspiring and so thought-provoking that I thought it would be valuable to share with you, my dedicated Fierce Factor podcast listener today. I might ask you the same question to start. What has been the single most important lesson you have learned along your leadership journey as an entrepreneur? And it took me a few minutes to really think of my answer. But for her, for this client, her answer came instantly. She said, hands down, the biggest lesson I've learned is to stop pouring from an empty cup. And what's so profound about this revelation is not the epiphany she had, but about the journey that she went on to get to this space. And so today I want to share with you some of her story and sweet hopes that if you identify with her situation, even a little bit, you might feel empowered to make some very intentional tweaks to your daily routine to finally get out of the cycle of your own exhaustion and overwhelm. And so today I actually wrote the notes for this podcast from UCLA Hospital where I have been sitting with my mom while she gets chemotherapy. And I haven't shared much about my experience with my mom and what she's been going through. But essentially, over the past few months of being on this journey with her, I've realized that there are some similar emotional hurdles that a patient undergoing a treatment like this will endure as a business owner who feels like they're drowning in their business. And this is not to compare someone's health with their business's health. But the reality is sometimes we do lose sight of perspective. We become so entangled in our business that we can't even see the impact that our stress has on our own health. And my mom has been fighting to shrink two tumors in her head, one behind her eye and one in her cheek. And listen, it's a daily mental battle. The side effects of chemotherapy vary. The results are really unpredictable. And the road to recovery doesn't guarantee recovery at all. It's a decision to show up every day and focus on the inputs, trust the process, and really not think about the what ifs. And the most recent conversation with her doctor really brought this emotional battle into focus for me. My mom, she's feeling sad, buried by her circumstances, and like there's really no end in sight. It's just a prayer and hope that things change. And believe me, this sure does put things into perspective. Like when I complain that my marketing budget isn't producing an anticipated ROI or an employee makes an accidental mistake, it's really not life or death. But going through this experience with my mom has really shed light on the path that we pass through at certain stages in our business where we play mind games with ourselves, telling ourselves that we need more, we have to achieve more, we have to gain more, we need more clients, we need more revenue, we need more publicity, visibility, and recognition, right? We let our longing for more dictate how we show up in our business and our life. Like my client who was pouring from an empty cup for a very long time. 
on one coaching call with this client, let's call her Susie. Susie told me about a recent lunch she had with a client who was also a longtime friend of hers after she had come in to visit the practice. Susie's patient and friends said to her at lunch, when I came into the business today, there was an energy that I haven't experienced before. And so Susie is talking about this. I asked Susie, well, what do you think she meant by that? And Susie said, I don't know. And I was like, well, didn't you ask her? And Susie said, no, I didn't want to hear the answer. And so based on that response, what do you think she meant? And Susie broke down into tears. She said, I'm so exhausted, I can't even keep it together. I run from patient to patient and yell at my team to grab me coffee. I might be having eight cups a day. How come I don't even have time to enjoy a cup of coffee? I have to grab the coffee. I can't savor it. I can't even take 10 minutes to sit down and drink my cup of coffee in peace and quiet. Why am I doing this to myself? So I asked her, why do you think you're doing this to yourself, Susie? And she said, well, my clients need me. I'm booked three months out. And I said, your clients, like the one who just was honest enough to tell you that your negative energy was a distraction. And Susie was silent. And she thought and reflected, and that was finally enough. I shared a post recently from Dr. Amy Shaw. She goes by the Fasting MD on Instagram. And she says, quote, can we all decide that hustle culture is not glamorous, overworking to the point you cannot exercise, eat real food, get sun, sleep, or spend time with people who recharge you is not glamorous. She mentions that the JAMA reported depression symptoms prevalence is now more than threefold higher. U.S. obesity rates are predicted to reach 50% by 2030. Chronic and largely preventable diseases in the U.S. have grown by a steady 7 to 8 million people every five years. Today, chronic disease affects 50% of the population and its care consumes more than 85% of healthcare costs. Leaders, we are working ourselves to a point that is compromising our health and our happiness. And what I learned from Susie and her openness to sharing this experience with us is that our quest for more may also be compromising the health of our business. Shortly after this conversation, Susie made one minor change in her schedule. She started seeing patients at 10 instead of 9 a.m., and she booked a personal trainer for four days per week in the morning. She was really nervous to make this move considering how full her schedule was, but she was willing to make a short-term sacrifice for a long-term investment in her health, her sanity, and her peace. Six months later, her life today has literally changed. She's lost weight. She's showing up more rested and focused every day. And she's since carved out even more time during the week to work on her business, which has resulted in successful new hires, time to onboard and train them, and time to sit down and drink her coffee. And I wanted to share this story with you, Leader, just in case you needed a reminder to stop and smell the roses, to put the importance of growing your business into a clearer perspective around how a life-first business really works. It's not about perfection. It's about living in alignment with your core values and making a decision to operate from a place of sufficiency, a mindset that I already have enough and I won't sacrifice the wholeness of myself as a woman at any cost. You see, what I've learned from both Susie and the real Susie, my mom, in this episode is that there are no guarantees in life. Instead, what is in our control is committing to living the best life possible with the resources and circumstances that we have available to us. Don't lose sight of why you are doing what you do and stop pouring from an empty cup. Fill your cup first and then take pride and fulfillment in filling others. You aren't fooling anyone. If you aren't whole, you won't be able to positively impact the people around you, period. Okay, leader, I hope this episode and brief story was a helpful reminder to take care of yourself 
and truly enjoy the zest of life every single day. I'll talk to you next week. Wait, before you go, hey, if you're vibing with this conversation and you wanna join me on my mission to help 100 inspiring and intentional women cross the next million dollar milestone in their business this year, or leader, maybe you want to become one of them, head over to Facebook and join our free community, The Fierce Factor Society. Over there, we're taking this conversation to an elevated level. Get access to resource guides, podcast supplements, guideposts, and direct communication with me, my expert team, and of course, a society of fierce women making big moves and disrupting the status quo in aesthetic wellness. You can link directly through the show notes or head to Facebook and search the Fierce Factor Society. See you there, goddess.